enabling us to pump the rooms with CO2 and not have loss from a cost perspective, that's really where you know we see the advantages. And then from a microbial standpoint, I want to welcome y'all to another Behind the Panels, where we are going to sit down and talk with some of our amazing Permatherm customers. Today, I have got Lindsay Shaw from Brighter Side Vertical Farms and Jeff Bennett from Permatherm. And we're just going to dive right in because I don't want to take too much of you guys' time. But Jeff, start me off. Kind of tell me what's your background, what's your expertise in the cannabis industry. Tell me a little bit more about you. Fill me in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um I've been with Permatherm probably, it's, it's close to four years now. Um, it's interesting because <clears throat> the fit comes from my background. Um, I've got background in construction, construction management, uh, HVAC. Uh, previous job was in HVAC. Um, and then also water treatment. Awesome. Lindsay, tell me a little bit about you, about Brighter Side Vertical Farms, about your background. What about that? Awesome. Yeah. So um, I'm one of the founding members of Brighter Side Vertical Farms. We originally started as a consulting firm in Denver uh, when the industry really took off in Colorado. And we focused on really crafting standard operating procedures to take clients from their garage grows into a more commercial and industrial setting. Um, and so as time went on and the industry started to mature a little bit, we really saw the need for commercial grade and industrial grade equipment. So we ended up uh, creating our own commercial line of mobile systems. Uh, we have living soil mobile troughs. We have a true vertical system. And yeah, since then, we have grown to a national company and we love building out cultivations. Um, and this is my... Um, maybe my 15th year growing, we really focus on, you know, creating products that we love, uh, that we know can transition and help our industry. I think that's awesome. And I know that, I mean, y'all have experienced a lot of growth, y'all have experienced a good bit of expansion. What's that been like for you guys? You know, it's been a roller coaster. You know, as I mentioned, we started as consultants, transitioned into manufacturing commercial grade product and steel manufacturing. And then from there, we really saw um, the need to expand on cultivation design. So it, it went from, you know, selling equipment to how do we design this facility to work properly? What is the proper ratio of veg to flower? Uh, what's the workflow? And then it, you know, naturally moved into what type of materials do we need to build this facility and what's out there? What is more eco-friendly? What's more efficient? So it really um, became an all, all inclusive, you know, package that we now focus on. For a period of time, I think a lot of cannabis growers were buying up and renting any broken down warehouse out there imaginable. And these buildings have sat vacant for decades in some cases. So now you're taking a building that you have to, you know, retrofit to get it up to speed. And then you're introducing, you know, traditional construction materials like stick, you know, drywall and such like that. And we, our environment is so intense that it, you know, something had to give, right? We had to find a better solution for building out these facilities and longevity. Um, you know, we have clients that we've serviced 10 years ago that they're now still looking at retrofitting their building, you know, and it's an ongoing price that they're paying to continue their cultivation. It never stops. So it's, you know, how can we lessen that for our clients and find products that are sustainable and, you know, they don't have to replace every 10 years. How did you guys, how did Brighter Side Vertical Farms find Permatherm? I actually think one of our partners found you guys or found Permatherm. Um, at a trade show. And we had a client at the time that was doing a build out in Detroit, um, our boys out in Detroit in Hazel Park. And it just became a natural fit uh, because again, they bought an old building uh, and they were looking at, you know, really these buildings become the shell at this point. And when we look at products like Permatherm, we look at, all right, we're building a building in a building. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we were lucky enough to find Permatherm at a trade show and it just snowballed from there. We've done so many jobs uh, with Permatherm since then. 
And it's been nice because we're, you know, Brighter Side isn't just, you know, we're not just our own entity cultivating and doing, you know, where one grow. You know, we felicitate build outs all over the country. So it is, you know, we're constantly onboarding clients. <laughs> whether it's just for equipment or for it's the complete build out. So, I mean, it's essentially our go-to, um, you know, for construction material is really using permatherm. It, you know, it's lab grade quality is the way we kind of say it. What are some of the other reasons that y'all continue to decide to use permatherm as you keep growing forward and expanding? So I would definitely say using permatherm and continuing to use permatherm is an easy decision because the product is so effortless. It's easy to put together. It's clean. We love to say that permatherm gives us a neutral space every single time. So as, you know, cultivators, you know, we cultivate in these rooms and they're refreshing the room when the cycle's done. I love the fact that permatherm's product enables us to have a clean slate every time. You know, there's no microbials that grow on it. Uh, we're able to keep our climate control at a neutral um, uh, temperature. Using CO2, we're able to have a seal proof room. So all of these things add to why we continue to use permatherm versus traditional construction material. And what I find within the cannabis space is, you know, just within licensing, permitting, anything like that to where, it usually happens very quickly, right? And once you get, a, uh, you know, uh, your CO or, or anything like that, it's let's go, let's go now. How do we get up and growing immediately? And that, I, to me, that's the nice thing about providing the solution is just how quick that you can put up a hermetically sealed environment. So. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And it's fun too for us. So we actually work with several different construction companies all over the U S you know, when we're in New Jersey, we work with the New Jersey company, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Colorado. So it's been really fun to actually turn on a lot of the construction companies to permatherm insulated metal panel product. So it's, it's really fun in that sense because they're a little hesitant. Sometimes they're like, I don't know how to put this product together. And I reassure them. I say, listen, I have physically myself built a room out of permatherm <laughs> panels. Like it's so easy to use. I can't say enough about it. And so the one cool thing is some of the contractors we work with now that they've experienced using permatherm's product, they're, you know, they're sold and it's, it's a no brainer for them when they're transitioning into a new job. It's like, okay, well, we're using permatherm that's checked done. We already know what that cost is going to be and let's move yeah. on. I also want to know, because we hit on sustainability a little bit, what have y'all noticed with energy and efficiency and that sort of things with your build outs with PermTherm? Okay. So the couple things that we've noticed is one, the environment holds better. So if we want the environment to be at 68 degrees, 72 degrees, something in that range, you know, it really does hold longer. Um, you know, essentially we're building a cooler, you know, that's uh, the type of technology we're using, right? So, um, and furthermore, when it comes to CO2 and introducing CO2 into our grow, CO2 is very expensive. And so having a seal proof room that enables us to pump up our CO2 into the rooms is, is great. So, you know, from, from a holding the environment temperature, enabling us to pump the rooms with CO2 and not have loss from a cost perspective, that's really where you know, we see the advantages. And then from a microbial standpoint, you know, at the end of each cultivation, I mean, we literally can hit it with a hose and clean it and it's done. Um, there's no, we don't see mold growth or anything like that. So that's been, that's been great because I know in a lot of the retrofitted buildings that we've built uh, equipment into, they're constantly dealing with mold production on drywall and just all this really nasty stuff that um, is not sustainable. Um, so we have a partner that we've been working with uh, for quite some time. And uh, he just recently went out to one of our grows in, in Lowell, Michigan. And he's in, they're in the construction period. They're about to be finished in a couple of weeks. And he called me and he's like, wow, it's just so beautiful. Like to be able to walk in and just see it put together, 
it's just gorgeous, you know, and, and he's been cultivating in Denver for a very, very long time. And he's going to be running that facility out in wool, but it's just nice to get, kind of get that feedback from an aesthetic point of view. Um, it really is just a beautiful cultivation. It looks like a lab. We want the environment to be the same from day one to, you know, 700 days from now when we're cultivating and we are constantly flipping rooms, you know, it's really refreshing to know that the environment stays exactly the same <laughs> from when we originally put it up and, you know, there, there's not much that changes. So that's, that's been a really nice, um, you know, it's just been really nice to have that. My last question for you, Lindsay, is we tweeted out to some of our Twitter followers and we asked them if they could ask any question of a successful grower, what would they want to know? And they came back and they said, if they were getting ready to build a new facility or getting ready to expand, what would you suggest are their next best first steps? So um, whenever we bring on new clients or we talk about a new build, so I really try to look at it from a bird's eye view um, and then work my way in. Uh, so when you're looking at a building, for example, we have a building here in New Jersey that we're going to be building out. And we're looking at it and I, I think about the building, the actual structure as a shell. And I start to think about, okay, we're essentially building a building in this building. So when you're starting to build out a cultivation, you really need to think about the products that you need, that you're putting into this. So for example, using permatherms products, you're creating a structure within a structure. So I really think it's important for people to kind of look at it from that perspective. Um, and, you know, don't, the other big thing I think people um, do is they try to maximize every square foot in the square inch for plant canopy, which I totally agree with. But you also have to recognize that you need sometimes more space is good. So I, I encourage people to look at their layout from a different perspective and really think about flow um, and think about space and think about your environment. So I guess to summarize um, my rambling is <laughs> essentially, you know, one, look at the, the structure you're building as just a shell and think about how you're going to build a structure within that building using Permatherms products. And then two, really look at the space you are providing yourself. Sometimes more, you know, more plants isn't always better. So really try to look at your rooms individually and see, do I have enough of space, enough space all the way around the room? Can I actually, do I want to be in this room constantly? And I think, um, you know, people will end up getting more product out of their rooms if they uh, even scale back a little bit. So from our perspective, when we come in and actually install like vertical farming equipment, I am always battling with our clients as far as like the working aisle space. They'll say, well, 36 inches is code. And I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, that 36 inches kind of shrinks because you plants are never grow in a straight cylinder. You know, they're always growing out um, to some extent. So, you know, I always try to preach, you know, needing a little bit more space because that's exactly right to your point you run into problems down the line where on paper that square footage and getting that extra, you know, foot of plants seems great from a equation standpoint, but then you realize that shoving those plants in or getting that extra row um, really just created environmental problems for you. I know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy to provide information and, and really direct people. I love being able to take a client from A to B or, you know, A to Z, excuse me, um, and really see them flourish. And it's, it's just really rewarding and exciting um, when they hit their goals. I love that you guys. That was awesome. Well, I just want to thank you both for taking your time today. And if you want to, you can check out Brighter Side Vertical Farms online at brightersidevertical.farms.com and over on social media. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for insider access to exclusive permatherm content.